purpose of this video is to help you out with the identifying halide ions lab. Now the first thing you should do is read through the background. I know sometimes you just don't want to read through the background, you just want to get through and get the procedure done and blah blah blah. Unfortunately in this case that can't be done. You must read through the background. Why? Because the background tells you what the expected reactions are for each of the halide ions. For example, it tells you here that fluoride ions blah 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 and it comes down here it says fluoride ions form an insoluble salt when reacted with calcium ions. It's important information. Then it tells you about chlorine and what you expect to see with that and it'll tell you about concentrated ammonia and sodium thiosulfate. All of the information you need is in the background. So once you've got the lab done I would definitely come back here and take a look and make sure you understand exactly what you expect to see for each of these ions and what they're doing. Alright, so that's in the background, the procedure. It's not particularly difficult. All you need to do is just follow the instructions set forth in the lab and there uh, this turns out that it works out pretty well. So the first thing it says, and I'm just going to do this part of the experiment first and then you can do the, the rest of it yourselves. Make sure that any results you write down are written down into your lab notes. Uh, just don't try and remember everything. You've got to write it down so you can write up your report. Alright, so let's look at the procedure. First thing we do, we take four test tubes. And it's nice they number them for you, but just put them left to right on the bench. And then what you need to do is fill them with 10.5 mils of each of these solutions. So sodium chloride first. And if you just mouse over it, you'll find out what you're adding. This is sodium chloride, that goes first. And then you type in 10.5 mils. And you can see that it fills it up. So we'll do the same for the next one, sodium fluoride. The next one, sodium iodide. And the next one is potassium bromide. So now we've got our samples. Now it says to add the calcium nitrate, 0.5 mole of calcium nitrate into the four test tubes. Here's your calcium nitrate here. So we put it on the test tube and it says to add four and a half mils, so we'll add. Now in order to see if there's a reaction or not, you'll probably have to zoom in on the test tube. In this case, oops. In this case I don't see anything going on on the bottom of that test tube. All right, so I'll go to the next one. And we're adding calcium nitrate again. And then I look on the bottom of this test tube and if you look closely you'll see that there is a bit of solid in here. And uh, you can see the difference between that and the, the previous one. There's nothing in the bottom, but here you've got a bit of solid in the bottom. That's considered a reaction. That's what you'll be looking for. Now I can do the same thing to these and uh, you, you can see what results you're going to get from those as well. But this gives a good piece of information for us. What you can do is go back to the background and you can see what was expected to have a reaction with calcium ions. After you've done all this, you can exit the, exit the lab once you've completed the procedure. There's a bunch of other things you're going to have to do. And then you can go into your lab report and you'll be able to see all of the things you'll need to do. So all of your lab notes will be over here and you'll be able to copy down what you saw as results for each of those. Be careful of those solids. Make sure you look closely at the test tube to ensure that you're seeing solids and you're not seeing solids. And then uh, you can and make sure you also um, 
record the colors of solids that's going to be important as well again read through that background get an idea of what you're expecting to see for each of these ions before you actually do the lab and it will go a whole lot easier for you I promise you now after you've done all that you'll actually be able to do an unknown as well two unknowns actually and you'll follow a certain procedure for those, you'll get certain results and from those results you will be able to identify what those unknown halides were. Alright, so that's it.